One of the hardest pages to build for any sort of business is the landing page. The landing page is one of those pages that you don't really have a real purpose for. Because you can say so many things on the landing page and they are related to the business. They make sense on the landing page, but at the same time they often don't make enough sense on the landing page. And if you don't make enough sense on the landing page, which is a very difficult thing to understand, and I'll try to explain it here with this example, what happens is that people co go to your landing page with a lot of interest, because they're like curious. Who are those people that I'm going to work with? What, what is this company? Like, what's going on there? And they go to the landing page, they visit it, they scroll around, and they're like, this is very confusing. And they leave, and they usually never come back again which sucks. So, trying to help with this issue, obviously I do this professionally and I do it for, you know, for a fee and I can do it for your website, but to help, to help you understand what the problems with this are and where you should be looking, because a lot of this stuff you can fix on your own in like five minutes, I will break down my landing page, the landing page of my business, Parker Labs. <sighs> if you don't know who I am, my name is Jordan. Jordan Parker and the Parker Labs, I think that makes sense. And I am an engineer. I was an engineer at least for 15 years. I made games in the first half of my career and then I moved to enterprise stuff, which is far less boring, uh, far less interesting, but, and kind of boring, but at the same time, it allows you to create bigger and, you know, bolder and more interesting things. While in games, you're typically limited to a budget, which is negative because <laughs> games are fun, but no one wants to invest as much in games, at least not here. Anyway, the point is, I'm using all of those skills of engineering, of tech, and of people, and leading people, which I did in the last years of my career, to help creators now, uh, creators as yourself, hopefully, to run a business that makes their own income. And, by the way, in this landing page, you'll figure out what, what I'm doing, hopefully, by just me analyzing it. So, yeah, let's get to the fun part. Let's get to the fun part. So, we have a landing page, right? Now, the landing page... Uh, has a purpose. It needs to get people who are interested in the business, not interested in just generally anything, not unaware about the business. No one goes to the business uh, to a business's landing page with no clue what they want. They usually have some remote idea of what kind of a problem they want to solve by going to that landing page, and it needs to present the business in some light and some and present one or several products that this business wants to offer. The visitor of this landing page. Those products can be free, paid, they can be services, whatever. The point is you want to lead people somewhere. If you want to have a funnel, aka a journey for people to walk, you need them to start somewhere and to end somewhere. So that means that they need to take steps in between, meaning your landing page being one of those steps needs, needs to get them to the next step, whatever that next step is for you. And I'll show you the next steps that I picked to insert here and why I did so. Now, you all already saw the above the whole, the full text it is very simple it is very striking this is the point of this it, it i hear here i just want to capture attention i want to get people in a little bit of shock so they can actually read the whole thing or at least read more than five lines of the whole page because people don't generally like reading landing pages because landing pages are generally boring so here you can see the big fuck the algorithm big letters very fancy wow amazing yeah so uh, the purpose of this is, again, I want to capture attention. I want people to be like, oh, shit, like, this isn't a normal landing page. Like, this is something different. I need to pay attention to this because I don't know it. So what happens with people is that they're trying to save their time and their energy. And that's normal. You're doing this as well. Like, uh, if I stop being interested, interesting at any point, uh, you will skip ahead in the video, obviously. And you should, because why would you watch something that doesn't benefit you? So people are like that, like everyone is like that. So unless I give them a good reason to read this, this landing page, they will not read the landing page. They don't care. So this is the reason. This is a striking message that gets them to lead a little bit more. This is not going to make anyone read the whole page. But it, if you're the kind of person that can accept this messaging, which is a filter for my business, like I, I like working with people for, who are tougher, who don't mind strong language, who don't mind me being direct because I'm a direct and... I have been uh, described as, as having the empathy of a brick, especially towards people who don't like thinking. And, you know, I'm an engineer. I have that excuse. Anyway, but the point is, if, if someone is too sensitive, we will not do good work for that person. Not me, not my partner. So we just want to 
get rid of them immediately by using strong language. That helps a lot, because no one who is very sensitive would, would like, oh, this, uh, this page sounds like the place for me. It's swearing. Amazing. So yeah, this is the purpose of this. We want people to read, and we want people who are not a good fit in that particular category to just get away, because they don't need to read the page. It, it, will, it, will, it will just waste their and our time. Next. You see we have a bar, a navigation bar here. I'm currently not using the navigation bar at all. It's empty. You can't even... Oh, you can click the low. It, it leads to the same page. It's kind of useless. I'm, I should disable this. And this, this link is the main link that I want to push on this landing page, which is the newsletter. The, this is the old newsletter called Create Lead Succeed. I haven't updated the links yet, but it's going to point to Creator Income, which is a new newsletter. And I have a link below that for, for that if you want to sign up. I'll teach you a lot of stuff in there. I even give all of my products for free. It's pretty cool. So uh, here... Uh, this is the this is the link. This is a section that is generally something that people are used to seeing. Amazon has a top bar. Uh, many sales websites have a top bar. This is a, a nice place. But at the same time, you'll see this top bar is not with a striking color. It's dark. It's black even. It's very boring. That is intentional. I want people looking here, not here. With most websites, it's the other way around. With most websites, you want this bar to overwrite whatever is on that page and for people to read the bar and then the page. I want the opposite here. This is just a reminder. This is, oh, if you're used to those bars and want to click one, use this. Otherwise, read the damn text. That's the point. Now, uh, on other pages, by the way, uh, once I, I build out the blog, the blog and everything, this is not going to be black. This is going to be a striking color, and the blog is going to be uh, is going to be uh, you know dulled down and less interesting. Because if this was a blog post, I would I would actually want people to to click here and not read the blog post. I will ha I'm preparing a welcome sequence that's going to be amazing, and I'd much rather have them read that instead of the the whatever blog post they have. They can read the blog post too as well. Whatever. Now. Next, I kind of explain the messaging. I kind of explain the problem. This is a pretty unaware problem. Like, I'm not even mentioning what this page is about. I'm not mentioning the company yet. I'm starting from a very, very far off place. This is intentional here. In general, I wouldn't do this to most landing pages. In most landing pages, people have some sort of a, uh, like, especially if you're a bigger business, you already have some sort of recognition for the brand. I don't have that. My business is new. It's from this year. If I started talking anything about Parker Labs at this point, people would be like, who the hell is that? And they will close the page because they don't care. Like, I want to make them care. And even, even if they were mildly interested from my content online, I want to hit them with this message. This is a message that I generally don't use in content as much. And I'm kind of saving for here and for the creator income landing page. This makes it very interesting to read and gives them an interesting narrative to tune into. So this is basically saying if the algorithm changes, you can lose all of your hard work. This is, this is true. I have customers who lost all of their work because the algorithm changed and suddenly they reached 100 x in the negative direction, which is not what you want. So yeah, we don't want that. Next, we have the first call to action, which is gather emails. Eventually, I'll put, a, I'll put a video somewhere here. I haven't recorded one, so it's not there. And it's not there mostly because I want to edit it and make it nice, and I don't have the time to do that right now. And I don't have a, a VSL editor. If you're a VSL editor, send me an email. We can chat. Anyway, so we have the first call to action. This is the exact same call to action as here. This leads to the newsletter sign-up page. And again, this is going to be updated to the other one. All right. And you can see that after you scroll a little bit, this, this thing goes away because you don't really need it. It's going to be navigation. But for now, especially on this page, I don't want people navigating. I don't have a, an important enough link to navigate them to. And, uh, and I will not add one until all of the other pages are heavily optimized so they can lead to, to a journey that usually includes the newsletter in some way. Because I want people's emails. If people are on my email list, I can talk to them for a lot longer than if they're on my website. That means I can build a better relationship, and that means I can sell more, and I can help more. Both of those are amazing. I want to have money in my business. I want to help people. Both of those things happen if I have time to talk to, to people. Otherwise, they are very hard. Next, I have a couple of testimonials here. This is just people that I worked with, people that gave me testimonials. I just put their faces here. If you know one of those people, you will... Trust me more. Kind of cool. 
Next, I have this last updated message. This is something that, by the way, I, I made this unselectable because people go around and select text and then copy random shit, which is unnecessary. And some of the stuff that I simply made not possible to select. This is a nice optimization because people will often try to copy something and they select stuff uh, stuff like uh, images and, and stuff that they shouldn't be selecting. Like, you should select text. Cause that's the purpose of selections, not to select images. Anyhow. So those are, those are a couple of people who gave me testimonials. You can't see the testimonials yet. I'm just adding a couple of images just in case you've, you've seen one of those people or worked with them. That gives me a little bit of credibility. If you haven't, no problem. The page continues. So, and uh, by the way, there is a little subtle element here, which is uh, instead of having a line here, I have an arrow. Arrows point towards something, and we kind of want to follow our arrows, especially with our eyes, because they're interesting. So that is a little tiny tiny optimization which gets people to read a tiny little bit more it's not massive it's not a hack that's gonna triple the reading ship of your landing page but it helps a little so why not so i have this next i am digging into the problem i'm explaining this because this doesn't say much it says you know the algorithm is a problem you know relying on an algorithm for all of your money is a problem and in fact it is and then i'm moving to explain this and the point is, social media wants you to stay on social media. Social media wants you to comment for as many times, uh, as many hours per day as possible. It wants you to make as much content as humanly possible. And it wants to pay you as little as possible. Because that is best for their business. If Facebook uh, doesn't pay Facebook creators any money, Facebook makes all the money from ads. And do Facebook pay creators? Not really. If Instagram doesn't pay creators, they make more money from ads. And do, does Instagram pay creators? Sometimes, but not very often, because it's not very profitable to do so. The only networks that consistently pay creators, and one of them is brand new, uh, is our YouTube and X. And we're not sure whether or not X is going to be a long-term solution just yet. It's just simply not enough information. I like the network, but still. And I still call it Twitter most of the time. Anyway, so... Next, I kind of explain the problem. I, I, I use very strong language here because I want people to read. Again, I'm trying to capture attention here. Most people will not read carefully. They'll read that and be like, oh, okay, you know, fuck that, cool. And then you'll scroll with their brains off. I want to turn people's brains on because he, unless they read the page, they will not understand anything. I don't want them imagining what my business does based on a couple of headings. I want them to read what my business does and understand what I'm saying about my business and not whatever they imagine about my business. So I want to catch their attention. Attention is very important. We need to earn that in some way. Okay. So, and here I mentioned the same shit. It's if you engage for for hours and hours and hours, LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or Threads or whichever network you want benefits greatly from this. You don't. You just get a few few people who, because of reciprocity, want to engage back. This can be great for scaling an account very fast. I've done it before. I've experimented with that, but it's not a great way to build a business because you spend six hours a day on social media engaging. You're not spending six hours a day learning how to be a better business person, how to help your clients better and how to just be better in general, which is not smart. Uh, if, if you could choose, you should choose being a better person because everyone wins in that scenario. Your business is better, your clients get a better, a, a better person to learn from and your team gets a better boss leader, whichever role you have. Uh, the lack of ownership for the audience is the second point. You can get banned from social media and poof, your audience is gone. And we've seen some very extreme cases. I put some horror imagery here, which is, you know, people just getting banned. I just found images of that. I don't think I, I kept any of the images of people who actually send me the real stuff. Anyway, and finally we have... Uh, we have the ad revenue because some people are like, oh yeah, but YouTube is paying me. Yes, YouTube does pay money for two creators, but at the end of the day, the people making the most money are YouTube because they are not creating the content. They're not putting the 50, 60, 70 hours of work in the piece of content that you made. They're putting no work into just distributing this with an infinitely scalable software system which is very different compared to making every single piece of content and investing the time, money, energy, and effort necessary. I'm not saying that this is entirely one-sided. It is not. But at the same time, it's very clear that YouTube has the more leverage here. So the question now is how do you get the leverage? And I'm obviously highlighting the lack of leverage on the side of creators because I want people to read the page and I want people to really understand the problem. I want, it, I want this to hurt. 
I want this to be very, 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 very powerful. And I won't do that if I add all the new ones in the world. All right. So here, uh, and the rest is just examples. I'm just trying to visualize this. I'm trying to make this imaginable. If people can't imagine what you're saying, they will not understand what you're saying. That's why using very long and fancy works like let's create synergies for collaboration and all that crap, they do not work. Because people don't know what you mean, and because of that, like, no, it's not that they can't understand it, people can think and get it, but because they have to think and they can't just hear it and it pops in their head, it's harder. And people don't want hard communication, they want to just chill and enjoy existence and not think about every word everyone is saying, because that's, ex uh, that's exhausting. So, you want to make stuff that you say imaginable. Next, and if you scroll up, you get this amazing menu bar. I need to add some stuff here, otherwise it looks kind of lame. Uh, there will be a, a, later down the line, there will be another sign-up button here. I want this to be sticky, like I want the sign-up button that's always there. And uh, there will be some navigation links here, And but it's going to be a very short list because I want every single page to convert people to the list. That's the, that's the, the main reason of the website, with very few exceptions. And you'll see them in a second. Next. The worst part, here I'm just quoting a bunch of numbers. The numbers are just a way to prove this again. So I'm trying, I'm beating the same drum. It's like, hey, this is a problem. This is why this is a problem. I'm, I'm drilling deeper in this. And then I'm giving them numbers and stats to, to prove this even more. So the whole goal is I want to make this as clear of a problem as possible. I want people to believe the problem. I'm not selling my company yet. I'm selling the problem. I'm saying, hey, you need a solution for this problem. Like, you need to recognize the problem. If people recognize the problem, then I can start selling the company. Then I can start selling myself. Then it makes sense. Right now, not yet. We need a bit, uh, a bit more time. Okay. Now, this, this was the whole digging into the problem part. This, this was it. It's three sections. It's not super long. You can see, like, you can scroll through it relatively fast. On mobile, it's a little bit slower, but it's still, like, reasonable stuff. It, uh, it's not too crazy. If I had to redo this again, I would probably have done two sections and not three sections because I think three is a little bit uh, too much. Or maybe I would kind of squash one of the sections so it's a slider or something like this, just so I can get people to get to the sales letter faster. But I think this is fine. Like It is reasonable. I need to split test this to figure out if there is a bad, like squashing this more would, would give me better results. Anyhow, so... The whole point is, I'm not directly talking about the company, because people don't know it yet, and I am uh, talking about the problem because people care about this problem, and they should care about this problem a lot. Now, we get to, uh, we get to a sales letter. I want to talk to the person directly. I'm not just, I don't want to throw facts and just throw random stuff at them and my opinions. I want to, to give them something more conversational that makes it feel better and it's, it is very much in line with the kind of content I make and with the kind of emails I write. Because of that, people should feel more connected to me and kind of get a, get a feeling of who I am and how I write and how I communicate. So we immediately start, again, you see this everywhere, but I start with attention. I want to, people to pay attention. So I start with the exact opposite message that I just had, which was kind of the implied message here is the, the platforms are evil. They're stealing money from you. It's all horrible. It sucks. And then I, and then I immediately people 180 degrees and say, nope, that's not the case. It's not evil. There is more to it because I want people to be thinking. I want them to be on their toes and trying to understand me and not just imagining what I'm going to say. Because if you imagine what I'm going to say, I like my opinion doesn't matter. It's all in your head and at the end of the day, it's you talking to yourself and it makes no sense. So I want m m me to be leading this conversation and not the other person. All right. Okay, so I'm basically saying, hey, they have more leverage, you have less leverage if you're not doing what they do. You need to be uh, to be running a business. I have a little bit of a joke here, like p m social media being evil in the context of are they doing something super evil? Not really, like they're trying to make more money from their business. They can use that money, in theory, to take care of their employees, to help to help starving children, to grow cities, to help the eco uh, economy of a country. They can do a lot of good with this. I don't know what they're doing specifically with their money, so I'm, I can't claim that they're evil. But at the same time, Technically, if you think about it, social media algorithms are designed to be super addictive. Now everyone has dopamine deprivation and, and can't focus for shit. So they're kind of evil as well. 
So yeah. Anyway, but I I put this in a, in a, in a way that is you know it's not the main point. It's just a joke in the in the in the whole thing, uh, showing that one I understand the context and you know there is nuance here. But at the same time, I'm not focusing on this because that's not the point. The point is your business, the reader's business, and not social media's business. Their thing is their thing. They can they can do whatever they want. We do what we want. Like I do what I want. You do what you want. Now, all right. So. I'm I'm basically saying so, some good stuff about being a creator. It's amazing to be a creator. I'm targeting creators. That's why I'm talking about creating, creating being being awesome. I don't want to say, hey, if you're a creator, this is for you, because that excludes people unnecessarily. Like, you can be an entrepreneur, you can be a solopreneur, you can be a business owner, and you can still benefit from a lot of what I do. I don't want to call you out by a random label. I'm just solving a problem that you have and that many people have. And if you like that problem, if you want the solution, then you come to me. If you don't want the solution, you don't, don't come to me. But I'm not filtering people out based on a, on a stupid label they put on, on themselves or society put on them. That's just useless. That is the niching advice you get online and it's not good advice. I wouldn't follow it. Okay, so first of all, uh, uh, not head not to creators and then we we get to the good part of social media which is it's free reach you're li reaching millions of people by just typing words or, or making videos online this is something that we couldn't do 20 years ago it's insanely cool and insanely awesome like i respect that i love that and i love that i'm living in a time in which i have access to that that's amazing but that is not as amazing if you can't use social media to create an actual business mechanism, if you can't have running economics helping you grow and scale and do all kinds of good stuff. So I'm uh, in a bit jokingly saying some bad words. Sales, getting paid for your work, asking your audience for money. It's all, it's all sales, by the way. So I say sales three times. It's, there is no difference. But I'm kind of building it up here with the intention to get people to... First of all, to break the pattern of pe that people are expecting because they see sales and, and freeze. I want gi to give them a couple of more words so it sounds more nuanced than it actually is I with the hopes of people relaxing a little bit. And uh, the whole thing is presented in a humoristic way because I don't want to, to be super serious about, oh, you need to sell, otherwise you suck. Like, I don't want to blame people for not doing something because most of the internet doesn't teach the correct stuff. And if I'm blaming, I'm just helping the problem. I'm blaming people that they tried their best, which sucks. I don't want that. I want to be supportive. So I am supportive by, by framing this in a way that is different, that is not uh, like putting people in a bad spot because they're not doing this. I'm just making a joke out, out of this because those words are so horrible. Now, still there. Uh, the, then I wrap up the jokes with like, hey, this scares many other people. Obviously, if you, if you read until here, you probably read the whole thing, like you read at least more of that whole thing, and you'll not stop after you, you, you read the word sales. Because it was framed in such a way that it, it's kind of difficult to stop exactly after this word. Like it, you have to be very weird to, to actually see sales and be like, oh no, this, this sucks and close your laptop. That's, that's kind of weird. But yeah, so the, the point is, most people who read the, this line would probably read those two lines and they'll, they'll see my perspective on the problem. Too many people are be being scared of those words. And it's very easy to not feel like you're being called out here. I don't want to call out people, hey, you suck because you don't want to sell. I'm just saying, hey, too many people are scared of this. That's a problem. And if you admit that to yourself, cool. If you don't admit that to yourself, but it's still true, you, you feel better about it and you can still actually get closer to accepting it instead of me saying, hey, you suck and you run away and I don't really help you. So yeah. Then I, then I uh, kind of poke in the, in the wound a little bit saying, you know, the 16 hour work days, now not seeing your friends and family, uh, you know, all the changes in the algorithm uh, and all that for just to not work a nine to five. Yeah. The, I've seen many cases in which being a creator is very much unfair and that is very visible for anyone who is in those situations but very much not visible for anyone outside because in content creation and generally online you're playing a status game you want to have high status because you want to have high status if you say hey my life sucks right now then you lose status and you're doing a disservice to your business so you don't hear about those stories as much as you should but they're there and there is a lot of them and I'm kind of 
softly explaining that without pushing too much because I don't want people to feel bad. Again, uh, this was enough negativity in the page. I don't want to be like, oh, no, life sucks, everything is bad. That's not, not the vibe that I want. But I want them to be able to, to read something that is negative uh, because that's a good filter for people and that uh, and if they're already in this position, they will be way more likely to listen to me if they actually agree with, the, with all of that stuff above. All right, so... Basically, I'm creating the main point, which is you can't be free unless you make your own money. And that's the, that's the general idea. And you should be owning your audience, platform, money, whatever. All right. And then the algorithm becomes a bonus and uh, you're cool. Okay. And, the, uh, and I'm writing this from the first person, by the way. This is not a corporation writing this. It's me writing this to you reading this. There's two people in this, in every sales page, in every email, in every piece of content, there's two people, the person writing and the person reading. There, there aren't any, any more. If you, if you use terms like we or us, it just sounds weird. It so, sounds impersonal and people don't like it as much. And I generally try to imagine myself talking to the person because that tends to, to sound more like me and, it sound, and it's funnier and it's more interesting. And yeah, anyway, so uh, basically I'm giving a little bit of status that we got bored of uh, both me and Diana, Diana is my partner, uh, got bored by working for old school businesses. We didn't like it, so we quit and made our own. So this is this is kind of starting to highlight our skills, starting to sell us as a company, starting to sell me and Diana as, as a business and not just selling the problem. I'm transitioning from selling the problem to selling us, two different sales. You need to believe the idea is important and then you need to believe the problem uh, like you need to believe the big idea the big idea highlights the problem and then i sell myself or or whoever whatever i'm selling as a solution to the problem right so then i have another invitation it has a cool picture i modified one picture for linkedin for this because I, I i was like why not um and basically it's like um why why would you read an explanation while i can show you what's happening like this is this is just a a, a cheeky way to, for me to try to get people to actually sign up with their emails because i don't like i don't want them reading this page ultimately i want them i want them to be reading my emails so i'm 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 saying hey if you read enough stuff and you kind of like me already why not give me your email and, and stop you know bothering with uh, with annoying reading that's the that's the main message here it's nothing uh it's nothing so fancy you can see here the framing is different. It's not, hey, give me your email. It's like, hey, you're invited. Being invited to places is cool. Giving your, your email is not cool. So I'm framing it as the cool thing because it's actually cool. Like I genuinely want a treasure this email and I'm going to be respectful about it. I'm not going to spam and I'm going to give you a lot of cool stuff. But I need to show that in some way. And this language is one way to do so. Obviously, if you if you use a frame that's like, hey, you're invited, this is going to be amazing, and then you're actually shit, then, you know, that's that's manipulative and unfair, and you shouldn't do that. But if I, I generally want the best for my, my email subscribers, then I think this is a perfect frame. All right. So, obviously, once we get to here, people are like, sure, I agree, maybe, probably they agree that this is a real problem. And they agree that, you know, that, you know, uh, there are some stuff about their business that sh they should be changing. But then the big question comes, why the fuck should I trust you? Because you're just some random person or random people on the Internet amongst many other random people on the Internet. So here I have a whole section titled like this very big letters, very 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 important uh like this this even through scheming people should see this this is an important section so i'm basically uh, showing some other problems i want this to be relatable like hey there isn't there's uh there there is enough of stuff already like we don't want surface level stuff we want trust like if you trust us then that makes sense it makes sense for you to read this it makes sense for you to work with us it makes sense for you to read the emails everything makes sense all right, so, and here I have another cheeky way of asking for emails. Again, you can see I'm asking for emails quite a lot. Like, I, I, I ask for emails, I ask for emails here, here, <laughs> two, three places, four places, five. This is the fifth place I'm asking for emails. So, and, and, I, and uh, because I just asked for emails, here I'm being, I'm making a joke. Because if I ask twice very seriously, it's going to be a bit too much. Obviously, like, like people remember this last invitation, which was like seven seconds ago. So if I, if I hear I'm like super formal, hey, 
you sh uh, join our email list. We have amazing emails. And they're like, yeah, I heard that five seconds ago and they, and they exit the page. So I'm checking here. I'm like, hey, if, if our special shameless bragging TM approach, it's not trademarked, obviously. Uh, and some people get bugged by that, by using the, the TM symbol inappropriately. I know. And that makes it even funnier. <laughs> uh, might be a good uh, uh, start, but to really trust us, you need, you need more. So get our emails already. And this is a very truthful statement. If you're going to trust me, you need way more than a stupid landing page. You need to talk to me a little bit more. And that comes in content or comes in emails. I prefer emails because that gives us more time. Obviously, YouTube videos are amazing as well. Cool. So why trust us? And instead of trying to give some bollock statement about the company, I'm just presenting the people in the company, which is me and Diana. And this makes things significantly easier because talking about people who are very imaginable is much easier than talking about a generic gray company that's exactly the same and exactly as memorable as any other company because companies are inherently boring because people can't imagine a company. If you imagine a company, what do you imagine? Probably a building or something stupid like that, which is not, uh, or if you uh, have been in, in leadership, you imagine a, a bunch of people. But that's it. You can't imagine a company otherwise. And this is a problem because... Because, or you can imagine a specific company, of course. But this is a problem because if I just say the word company, people don't know what to, what to expect. If I show them the people behind the company and they have a picture, people know exactly what to expect. So here you can see a, a pretty picture of Diana. This was from a magazine that she uh, was in. It was a, the manager magazine in Bulgaria. Very, very, very cool photo shoot. Very cool picture. So yeah. So she's very empathic. I start with that. I, I want to emphasize that part of her. She's a, she's an amazing she's an amazing leader and amazing at sales. These those are the two things that I want to talk about. So what do I do? I I talk about how empathic she is and and how she sees the best in people and how she helps people. I give examples of her doing this. She she worked as a leader, a manager, a project manager, and CEO. So lots of experience there. Uh, she sold high ticket stuff. And I'm mentioning that, and this is actually very much true. She would not take any projects below 1 million in a bit. Uh, they were selling very expensive Oracle equipment, very, very pricey stuff. So 1 million there is not particularly high. But, you know, for most sales, 1 million is insane. For individuals, it's crazy. But for B2B sales, that was like for, for their company, though, those were the top 20% uh, of deals, basically. But it's still super cool because she was like 23 or something. It was, it, it was crazy. Next, she worked with, uh, in a bunch of top secret projects. I frankly can't say who, what those are, but I can say you that a lot of Europe is benefiting from that. And some people really hate the results of that. But yeah, let's not get into that. Anyway, she, uh, uh, oh, maybe she, she was 23 here and she was, I don't, I don't know the age numbers. She, she's 18 now, so it doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, she she used to write for a couple of Bulgarian magazines and spo got sponsored by, by the ESO, by ESO because of that. Uh, she worked with pre plenty of teams, some of them pretty big, and uh, she's very annoying when it comes to dogs. Like she loves dogs way more than people. It's it's scary, crazy. But yeah, you can see the structure here is I am giving examples. I'm giving factual examples of her life. Obviously, I cherry picked some of the coolest stuff because I want people to to build instant status and trust in Diana. And that won't happen if I write a seven page essay on why she's cool. That will work if, if they get a good overview because they're not here to learn about her. They're here to get more stuff about the company. And one of the items is obviously an exaggerated joke. All right, and then I, I'm hammering on on the fact that she's a good leader, she's a, she's a good boss, she's very empathic, and instead of giving a testimonial for her, I, I literally searched uh, through Slack and got a bunch of stuff from Lessa, who just basically says a lot of good stuff about Diana. I'm kind of envious, by the way, just to be noted. Uh, but she says a lot of good stuff about Diana, and I just basically got a bunch of it, but there is so much more. Like, she... There were so many messages. Like I, I, this is real as well. Like I, by looking for that, I found that she said, "fuck" eighty-three times, and uh, in eighteen thousand messages, we write a lot. Uh, uh, like we talk a lot with our clients, and most of those, like sixty of them, were compliments to Diana uh, or related to something that Diana did. So yeah. Like Diana is very much beloved by every one of our clients, and this is what I'm trying to highlight. And uh, you, you can see I'm not starting with, oh, we're the best at this, we're the best at that. I'm starting, hey, clients love us. 
Because that's like this is this is the vibe that we're looking for. We're looking for relationships and partnerships with clients, and that's why I'm intentionally starting with the person pushing with relationship and, and partnerships with clients. Because I I very much suck at that way more than the like I'm way worse at that compared to Diana. I'm good at the technical stuff. I'm good at the optimization funnels and that, and that jazz, which Diana isn't. But I'm not mentioning that here. Like we both have our strengths, and I'm obviously highlighting the respective strengths. Next. I go to myself. Mine is kind of less interesting because I hate writing those. But yeah, I'm the overly logical brains. I'm I'm obsessed with game design and, and using game design pretty much everywhere. That is still true. I use game design in every part of life. I even use game design to learn magic, by the way, which is uh, unnecessary to say the least. But yeah, anyway, uh, so I'm basically listing a bunch of facts. So I, I used to be a software engineer for a very, very long time. I started to, as a kid, basically. Um, I started in a game development company. The first company I worked with was, was, was my own. It was a very, 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 very big flop because I didn't know shit. Uh, but, you know, I tried and tried and tried again. I had two more startups after that. Um, uh, our last client, uh, like we were together, me and Diana, but uh, our uh, one of the clients, because we had a bunch of clients, but one of the biggest clients uh, in a very boring industry, by the way, uh, was uh, was making 2.1 billion in profit last year when we worked with them. Uh, and uh, we made them 100 million, maybe more. I have no idea, to be honest, uh, like of the exact numbers, but it it was pretty, like it was pretty wild. And I have no idea because I, I don't have access to those systems anymore because we stopped working for that company. We we built the, uh, we built the local office here to 70 people and then we got bored and made our own business. Anyway, uh, I have the best roadrunner crew you'll we'll never see. This is a moving card magic. And this is uh, this is again the the goal is uh, the goal of this is this is a very niche joke. I want people like, oh what the what the hell is that? Like I don't know what that is. Um I I I am uh, I'm basically mentioning tech technology because I love tech and I play with apps uh, all the time. This is useful for a lot of the tech projects I do. I do some freelance work. I do some uh, Notion work. This is useful. People need to associate me with tech in some way. And some people don't associate tech with apps and software engineering. So I'm kind of putting all of those in different ways and forms. Uh, and then I have a testimonial from Kieran. Kieran is a very is a very prolific writer right now. He's very big in the space, so his testimonial should be worth a lot to quite a few creators. So I'm just using that because uh, it's a very very good testimonial, and he's a cool person to work with. Cool. Next, so this is very straightforward stuff. Basically, presenting ourselves, cherry picking interesting bits and pieces of our lives, trying to be short uh, about it, not too long, and. Like those claims are not provable. You, like, we did those things, but you can't, like, you can't really blindly trust them from a website. Yes, you can go to LinkedIn and check about a bunch of those things, but a lot of this you have to extract from from context and from nuance. It's difficult. Like we've experienced them, and we, you, we can say those things, but it is very difficult for someone to just blindly trust, trust this. So we highlight that and uh, give people another anchor for trust, which is the testimonials. They help a lot. Uh, we, and we have two of them here. And then I use statistics again as a third angle to, to show some credibility and proof. Because by the way, we both are great at numbers and we actu actually use numbers to run businesses and not just, oh, this feels nice. Or, oh, this works for this other person. It's like, does the num do the numbers support this or not? But yeah. All right. So uh, we're, we're giving some uh, some just numbers of people we worked with. We worked with a lot of big companies. We worked with a lot of people. We delivered a lot of value in the projects. Like, by the way, this is mostly estimated based on what, uh, how much clients paid, not on how much clients made from those projects. No, what they made is significantly higher. Big software projects are like that. Like, again, this sounds super impressive if you, you're doing this alone. Big IT companies make other companies a lot of money. Otherwise, it's just not profitable for anyone. Um, this is a very, 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 very undertoned thing because this is the thing that I can conceivably uh, uh, prove with the current stats I have. The numbers are significantly higher, but I can't prove higher numbers and I don't want to be challenged on this and I don't want to bother with this. So I kind of lowered this, uh, this down. This is a very rough count because I'm not going to count the... Fortune 500, I went to the first 150 and so I found 57 people that we were like businesses we worked with. I was like, 57 is cool enough. 
and I just used 57. And I like the number, so that was one of the biggest reasons I stopped, by the way. Because, yeah, I was kind of lazy about this one. Anyway, the point is, like, this is st statistical information. This is a different form. This is a different way of thinking for people. And this is a different way of proving this. So I want people to be thinking about this even differently. So I'm giving them different angles for, for them to trust me and to trust the business. One of them is, hey, look, my partner is amazing. Hey, look, I am amazing. Hey, look, we're both amazing in terms of, you know, just raw numbers. And then we have another try, which is, hey, look, we worked with all of those cool companies. This is true. I personally worked it, uh, in Uber. I personally worked in VMware. I personally worked with Microsoft and Google. And I have partnered with people in Apple. I have delivered projects as a, as a third-party provider. And I've partnered with people in Notion and delivered services as a third-party provider. And I'm currently using Notion a lot and selling Notion templates and whatnot. And Diana has, a, uh, has worked with most of those and, and even more. Like we, if we add all the companies, the list would be stupidly long. Maybe, maybe I should split test this and see if that helps the conversions. But yeah, anyway. Now, this page was the majority of the, of the selling the idea and selling us. I don't have that much other stuff that I want to say. So I get into the services part. I, 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 this, is, the, this services part is kind of like a link in bio section. I want to give people the pick, the pick your own journey thing. I obviously want them to go to the email list. That's why I have so many call to actions. But if they don't want that, I'm giving them the other options because this is a landing page. For a landing page and for a company's landing page, I have no idea why they're here. So I'm giving them all of the options in case they are looking for something specific so I can find it and they don't bother me with emails and stuff and they just go to the respective place. Okay, so first thing, we can build their, their first pro. I've built a bunch of Notion templates, I've built a bunch of websites, cheat sheets, whatever you can think of. Like th those make excellent products and those are something that we offer. So I basically explained the process. It's not fancy. It's like we can build your next product hands free. It is a done for you product offer. So we will make your product for you. And how that works is you talk to Diana for about a bunch of hours, like usually do two hour sessions. I build you an ocean template. Usually it's an ocean template. I don't care which platform it uses, by the way. As an engineer, I can do them in Notion, Coda, Airtable, whichever. They're exactly the same thing for me. It's just a database. But uh, people know Notion templates the most, so I use Notion template. I pick because if I don't pick what I'm offering, my audience picks, and they don't know what, what I ca can be offering, so their pick is always worse. So I'm picking the, the, the thing that has the highest chance of conversion. If someone clicks here and then, and then asks me, hey, can you actually make this kind of a template instead? I'll say, yes, sure, it's not a problem. But I, can, I don't have the, as much time to, to explain that, so I just uh, uh, mention it in passing here, and that's it. But I, but I highlight the Notion template because that's easy to understand. People can imagine that because they've seen a bunch of Notion templates, and I show them a bunch of the templates that I made. Like, those, this is all stuff that I made. A lot of it is free on YouTube as well, so you can just get it. And I have a testimonial about my Notion template skills, because why not? Like, even more proof doesn't hurt. Some ideas... And, I gi and I'm giving people imaginable situations in which they can use an Ocean template and in which they can, you know, organize something that they care about. And I'm calling out different types of people and different types of problems. So whatever your problem you have, whatever, you know, fi fix I can provide with that Notion template, you kind of see yourself there in one of the options. Next, this is the first, like this section, I actually copied this three times for the three di broad directions I want people to take. Next, we can help people sell their product. This is for funnels. I make funnels, I make sales funnels, I write them, I design them, I make the tech behind it, I do everything. And Diana is currently uh, working on work on under understanding and writing sales funnels as well, because when it comes to one-to-one -one sales, she's abs an absolute beast, but she hasn't done this in writing enough. So she's not converting this skill to writing. After a couple of months, she'll be writing better sales funnels than I do. But for now, I'm the one that, that that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. But yeah, so I'm basically... Uh, explaining what building funnels is, because not everyone knows and not everyone understands. Obviously, I don't have enough time to teach people about funnels here, and I won't, but I'm giving them a brief overview and some ideas that can make help them make the decision, and they can click Get Started and so on. So here you can see I'm using this same section, but I'm using it differently. That's actually a mistake on my end. This visual language, if I use it for three examples, there should be three examples here. Wait, I clicked Save here. 
Uh, there should be three examples here. This is used differently, which is a mistake. Like this, this reduces the usability of the website. I need to redesign this, but I was lazy about it. Just so you know, like design, if you design something in one way, if you reuse the design, the functionality should be the same. In this case, that's broken, which reduces the user experience a little bit. It's possible, that's why I left it, but still it's something that I will edit in at some point. All right, so this is, I, I'm basically uh, breaking the funnel process into three parts. My focus is I want to kind of uh, uh, kind of show people that this is a work in progress. Like, you, uh, I will write you a sales page and it's going to sell for the best uh, forever. It's just stupid. It's about creating that system and improving it over time. I don't mind teaching people how to improve it themselves, but the improvement part is not optional. So, yeah. Uh, and by, by showing this, if, if you are looking for a sales funnel, for example, on LinkedIn, I'm mostly promoting my funnel building capabilities, you know, to click here. Makes sense. Next, this is the final, this is the final generic call to action, which is, hey, you, you're not sure what to do, you know, click here. Like, we can help you level up your team. This is for B2B offers. We sometimes run cold email campaigns. Uh, this is a good way to kind of keep a post on the market that helps uh, helps people see this. And, and now I'm looking at this from an incognito browser, and I can see that one section is missing. All right, we are back. Now this is the this is the last section. I had this off, and thanks to this video, now it's on. So the website has just improved thanks to you. So thank you. Uh, anyway, so the the point is, uh, I'm again making a final call to action. Seriously, start with your emails. Because I don't want to give the bullshit generic solutions. I want to help people uh, by showing them how to think and how I think. This is by the way what this video is about. I'm showing how I think. Thinking is useful. And this this uh, this final call to action supports that. Then we have a, 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 a very small footer with some of the legal stuff. with a contact us button and another call to action for the emails. That's the entire page. You can see it is aligning a problem. Highlighting this problem even more. Highlighting it even more in a different way. There is a sales letter kind of humanizing the whole thing and introducing myself and starting to pivot from the problem to us as the solution. Then I'm banging on the, the email drum as much. Then it's all about trust, 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 trust. And then we finally have a, a pick, pick whichever service you want. In most landing pages, you want this section for sure. You want to let people pick whatever they want and you want to prioritize them in a way that suits your business. So for example, on this landing page, I would probably want to work more, uh, like what I want most is the emails. Like I want people to give me their email. If they don't want that, I either want them to purchase a Notion template or I want them to, I want to help them uh, build a funnel. Those are the two main services we sell. This is the final catch all thing, which is in like, if we send a cold email to some business and they come to the website, they'll see this and they will find something that kind of relates to them. So this is this is there only for this reason. It has a nice picture of Diana uh, having a big lecture of, uh, with a bunch of uh, smarty pants people and all that jazz. And again, I'm banging the email drum. That's the whole thing. And on a sales page, uh, sorry, not on a sales page, on a landing page, what you wanna wanna have is you might not wanna uh, start from the problem. You can start from your own business if you have the brand for that. By all means, start from the business. Don't waste that time with people. Like if Uber started their their landing page with like, why do you need to go from point A to point B? That would be incredibly stupid. Obviously, so you don't necessarily need this part. This is not a template, but this for our case makes sense because we're we're solving a problem that's not as popular as. as the problem Uber is solving, for example. Uh, you definitely want some sort of a per personalized sales letter if you can fit that, if you can get the CEO of whatever business to fit that, that makes a lot of sense. That can kind of introduce the whole concept from a personal perspective. And you want the trust section. The trust section can be formatted in whatever way or form. It can be personal, it can be impersonal, it doesn't matter. But you need a section that explains why should I trust you and not somebody else. Because there are so many people in companies on the internet, you want to, to explain to people why you you don't suck, basically. Because there's a lot of people who do suck. And yeah. And finally, you you want to have some sort of a list of the things you do, and you want to prioritize that in some way or form, because if it's just a random, you know, pile of 75 services, it's going to be super confusing, and no one will click anything, because why would they? That's, you know, a lot of work. So yeah, that's the whole thing. If you like the website, it's parkerlabs.co. Uh, if you want to get our emails, or my emails technically, because I'm the one writing them most of the time, it's creatorincome.co. And yeah. Peace out. I have more videos on the channel if you want to learn more. And have a lovely day. Bye.